Hello and welcome to Amnesia the Dark Descent. It's not all the time since I've tried to narrate anything. And this game is an oldie but a goldie. I've never even beaten this game in the first place, so I'm not gonna not gonna do hard on this one. Don't forget, some things must be forgotten. The shadow hunting me. I must hurry. My name is Daniel. I live in London at... at... Uh, Mayfair. What have I done? This is crazy. Don't forget. Don't forget. I must stop him. Focus. My name is... I, I'm gonna try to be quiet during the cutscenes. The character. Trying not to hit the problems. This game is old, ain't it? I don't know what this game is. This game is a very good. This, this game does do a really good job of saving the atmosphere of the game. Use you to shove up someone's butt. This guy got like a Costco size pitcher of Pepto Bismol or the fat. Okay. Seen the boxes, they like light candles and shit. Steadily right. 
wind coming from nowhere. Look. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you up with some knowledge. You're fucking hot. August, 1839. I wish I could ask how much you remember. I don't know if there will be anything left after I consume this drink. Don't be afraid, Daniel. I can't tell you why, but know this. I choose to forget. Try to find comfort and strength in that fact. There is a purpose. You are my final effort to put things right. God willing, the name Alexander of Brandenburg still invokes bitter anger in you. If not, this will sound horrible. Go to the inner sanctum, find Alexander, and kill him. His body is old and weak, and yours, young and strong. He will be no match for you. One last thing. A shadow is following you. It's a living nightmare, breaking down reality. I have tried everything, and there is no way to fight back. You need to escape it as long as you can. Redeem us both, Daniel. Descend into the darkness where Alexander waits and murder him. Your former self, Daniel. to run. Thanks. Alexander, is it inside the castle? In a manner of speaking. Come, bring the lamp. You've been to the refinery, have you not? I don't believe I have. Is it connected to the... What did you call it? The inner sanctum. My most precious chamber, Daniel, and it lies well beyond the refinery. In fact, it lies beneath the very stone of Brennenburg.
I <laughs> don't mind the woman dying. Let me see this. Don't mind the dying woman. If failed to catch your power, tears were beginning to well in his eyes as he received the first kick in the stomach. His woman hit me. Fear she too. On the 16th of May, 1839, the unflinching African sun has continued to plague our expedition, making it impossible to dig until dusk. How Professor Herbert managed to find the location in these vast plains of nothingness remains a mystery to me. When I asked him about the tomb again, he told me about the legend of Tin Hanan, the mother of us all. An interesting story in its own right, but I can't help feeling there's more. Later that evening, we uncovered a passage beneath the dunes leading to a sand-covered stone structure. The professor was confident it was the tomb we sought and ordered the others to clear the way late into the dark, cold night. Tomorrow, I shall lead the men into the ancient structure, hoping to reach the burial chamber. No matter what the professor is keeping from me, the dig should yield something interesting to take back to London and the British Museum. Okay, so... Stand standard. Standard British. All the other countries can raid their temples to steal their shit and take back to their own country. Sounds like... Sounds like... Services to Alexander, Baron of Brandenburg. That's the guy. That's the guy we were trying to kill, right? This contract will reign for a total of three years when my freedom shall return to me. In addition, Alexander, Baron of Brandenburg, is to recommend my services at the Prussian Royal Court and within the sanctum of the Order of the Black Eagle. May no man break the seal. Wilhelm House Rarich. Seventeenth of May, eighteen thirty nine. My hands tremble as I write. I feel a need to document my tribulation, for I fear that my memory will fail me if I linger. Today, I took some men and ventured into the dark, ancient passage we uncovered. Our torches burned faintly in the murky air as we slowly made our way underground. The men were superstitious and fearful. They argued loudly, and I felt their strange language getting to me. I mustered my strength and yelled at them to continue down the slopes and broken steps. The crudely carved passage confused me. It looked much older than the 4th century structure we had expected. The twisting path emerged into a great antechamber. The walls were lined with statues unlike any I'd ever seen. Despite their unearthly quality, I felt a strange familiarity toward them, which haunts me still. At the far end of the chamber, a great slab of stone sealed off whatever lay ahead. I gave the order to raise it, and as I pushed through the narrow space, the heavy stone suddenly dropped, sealing me inside. I was trapped. Keep in mind that was my that was previous me.
doors on both ends. I'm figuring I'm gonna go try this one first. I was just, it's just the one I went to before and I just didn't even... Yes, yes it is. unforgiving stone wall for what seemed like an eternity, I realized it was hopeless. I was trapped. I fell to the ground, gasping for air, trying to focus. That's when I saw a faint blue shimmer. My weakened body was heavy to carry, but I managed to push myself toward the enchanting light. It was waiting for me. Enclosed in dark nothingness, I felt myself drawn to the mystic light. I reached out, closing it in my hands. The faint glow escaped my fingers and began to spark brightly and spirit me away, unlocking alien memories of spiraling towers, endless deserts, and impossible geometry. The next thing I can remember is the grating sound of stone being lifted. The voices of the Arabs pulling me to safety. And grasped firmly in my hands was the broken pieces of a most peculiar relic. Let's do what we can. There is much to be done about the wars. We should reinforce weak structures. The ground will tremble and there's a risk everything will cave in on us. Especially downstairs. Here, here, and there. Let's get the servants working on it.
You have to be swift when you activate the first one. You hear that? If it stops, you'll have to start over. Isn't all this a bit excessive? You can never be too careful, Daniel. Clad mountain stressed with scattered lakes is as picturesque is as picturesque as can be. Albeit the area is haunted by the dark. Ask any local and you will hear proof of the widespread superstition. All travelers should indulge themselves in such conversations since it will certainly serve as exciting entertainment. All of them have their own twists on the tales, but there are some motives that keep gatherers. This story reaches all the way back into the time of the Thirty Years' War. It is said that the soldiers who abandoned their duty got lost in the cold, dark woods and were forever damned to rock and gold in the mounds. Their bodies wrought by their tainted souls have left them in disfigured and empty of essence. Many have sighted them over the years and described them as horrid remnants. They move sullenly through the woods, sliding away from the beholder, the actual gatherers, as they seem to follow some ambition to steal the living creatures. Is it their prey which can be heard struggling at inside damp black sacks, dragging behind them which reveal their presence? What dark scheme do they follow? And the visit undone. Henreich Corn Cornelius Agrippa, the well known Everd Evernite, visited Alstad at the start of the 16th century. He resided in a local inn for the fortnight as he looked for remnants of the kingdom's past. During his stay, all the prominent members of the society paid notice and he was mentioned in many records of the time. One day, he went to investigate a burrow in the Northwest Gales, only to have never been seen seen again. Henrik is known to have passed away in Grenoble some ten years later. He dismissed the notion of ever visiting Elstad, which makes you wonder what really happened. Who is this mysterious man who visited this sleepy hamlet in the woods and what happened? The Immortal Baron. The Baron of Brennenburg lives a reclusive life with his family at his castle nearby Elstad and is most like those of noble birth. Rumors are inherited alongside with the title. Researching the history reveals little before the castle was consumed by fire in the late 16th century. It was rebuilt by Alexander, a nobleman from the Rhinelands claiming the role as protector of the Prussian state. Assuming that's the semi soldier we're trying to kill, Alexander helped the region to flourish and remained popular throughout his presumed lifetime. The family has always been secretive when it comes to lineage and heritage, and therefore the birth and death of Alexander and his offspring has never been fully recorded. This has fed the idea that the Baron is in fact one and the one and the same that came from the West over 300 years ago. I lived through the time of occupation and joined the coveted order of the Black Eagle along with the great leaders of this country. The folklore. Regarding 
closing of the wine cellar. Wilhelm and his fools have endangered my research long enough with their absent-minded handling of the human vessels. The sheriff is keeping a watchful eye on the forest and is killing my trusty servants. It is a matter of time until I follow the trail of Brandenburg. I need to lock Wilhelm and his men up to. I need to lock Wilhelm and his men up to avoid further investigation of the, from the public. The wine cellar will either be sealed off until the matter is handled. Either the king's men leave, or they will starve. Whatever, whatever comes first. They can rot for all I care. Maybe I will feed them some wine. It, it would, in some sense, solve both of my problems. Shit. I was definitely about to try to finish this off for today. Scenes. And we shall see.